And without further ado, we're going to get into chapter 31, tournament round one. All right, it is tourney day. Finally starting the Pokemon League Championship. <laughs> woo woo. So Volk actually took the challenge from Zelfry pretty to the heart and is getting information on his own about his opponents. He brings along the, the book that he borrowed from the College of the, the Sinro. They also say that the Coliseum seats about 24,000 people in general. And just for some perspective on, on the size of this Coliseum, and by no means calling it small, but the largest stadium is in Michigan, the Michigan Wolverines, and it can see 107,601 fans. And I've seen the Michigan Stadium. Even a quarter of that size is still a massive stadium. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't imagine like seeing that huge of a stadium, even at 24,000. And the stadium is also fitted for the games. So they brought in a Gargoyle Arcanist who's able to reform the arena after it gets blown to pieces during the matches. <laughs> They have Caldarius Arcanus there to heal anybody who's injured. They have Encanto Arcanus who are able to put up a telekinetic barrier to protect the crowd from any stray magic or weaponry that comes away. So it is fully designed and, and ready for the tourney. Oh, come on. I want to catch a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> Except when the hockey puck's a fireball. This is true. All right, so... Volk and Luther are underneath, and Nicolette actually mentions that it's been a while since they've seen Luther. Nicolette does ask if Volk swept anyone off their feet, and Luther be loyal as heck. Talking about Karna, the gala, Luther being the, the gentleman that he is, says that a man does not kiss and tell. Nicolette just straight claps back with, well, Luther is not a man. He's a sentient clothing. <laughs> Which is the best description for him. Why? that you can have but there's really no other way to have to put it so i mean to, kudos to nicolin for that yeah he's like dr strange's cape out there he's <laughs> <laughs> sentient chloe so volk and saxis they get to start off with the puppy arcanist that we met earlier on in the book as they're announcing the tournament bracket volk does notice that adelgis's brother nero is also listed He's fighting, and here is a Storeworm Arcanist. So more to come with more interaction on, on their family. Well, and another one of the, the rules as far as the apprenticeship levels go is that the Arcanists are only allowed to use whatever items they specifically have made. This comes makes it a very difficult choice or decision, I would imagine, for the, the rule keeper, because technically Volk didn't make his sword. Delphi getting ahead of the curve was already looking into that. And especially with Volk being second bonded, they did allow the sword because of the fact that Luther helped with actually making the sword. So it's not necessarily wholly out of the question for, for Volk to keep on to it. And that means he also gets to have his mirror shield. Volk still doesn't have his pendant, which... It seems like it was going to be a problem, but then Zelfry's like, yeah, bro, he's with me. It really showed his, his power there. <laughs> right. Just, he's with me, you know, like, I got him. He's my apprentice. They lose shit. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll have to tie it onto him, make him carry a string. <laughs> we find out that the Unicorn, Pegasi, and the Sovereign Dragon Trials of Worth will be conducted during this uh, this tournament as well. This is going to be basically for the Unicorn and the Pegasi, at least. This is going to be the new batch of recruits for the Sky Legionnaires and the Knights Draconic. And it is fun because their Trial of Worth are physical challenges. So it is something where they can have it in the arena. You can really, people can come view it as sort of a, a side event to the uh, tourney. Exactly. At least in my head canon, I always thought about how like these trials are worth they're they're almost mystical. Like you don't know what it's gonna be until you get there to to compete against them. And granted, I don't know why I got this in my head canon because literally in the first book, the first couple of chapters were like, Yeah, we know exactly what's gonna happen, so I don't know. <laughs> I always felt like these are they're like mystical and Yeah, it does seem strange that it's almost something you could train for. Like they're it's their version of an Iron Man or a marathon. Right. Like if I could practice to become a wizard, this is how yeah, I'm <laughs> going to do it until I have to actually go. With Zaxxus and Volk, they do bring a level of conviction that is basically like at the same level as they were when they were uh, confronting Callisto because 
We don't like these puppy arcanists at all. They are feisty. They <laughs> get in their face. They were making fun of Karna. The whole incident with the Frithgill getting called out, they are anxious for revenge at this point. Calling a hexa skag and all that. Like, mm -mm. You don't be doing us like that. My other thing is, what does Zaxxus have in this fat pouch that he has? Like, it's literally listed as a fat pouch on his belt. What is it? Really hoping it's not actually fat in there. <laughs> <laughs> he was practicing his, his magic tricks with his fire, so hopefully it's fire-related and not a snack for after. <laughs> like his snack pouch that he had when he was doing it. Yeah, he, he tucked in a little hard tack in there, and partway through, he'll break it, break it out. Hey, what if it's Scooby Snacks? <laughs> it's going to be tough to fight after Scooby Snacks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> This whole chapter of round one actually just is the lead up to the tournament or the actual round itself. We do want to thank everybody for listening today. Uh, we also want everybody to remember that we do post a new episode every Wednesday morning around 11 Eastern Standard, which would be 8 o'clock Pacific Standard in the morning. We are on all podcasting platforms and YouTube Music as well and Google Podcasts, Podbean, all that good stuff. We're on YouTube as well for video. So if you guys want to watch the video rather than listen to it, our editor, Dan, he does a really good job with adding pictures of things, links to all of the different uh, websites that we use. He does make it quite entertaining to watch that as well. If you want to reach out to us, we're on Gmail at frithguildpod at gmail.com or on Facebook or pretty much any other social media at frithguildpodcast. And we do also want to thank the Frith Chronicles wiki as well, again, because they're such a great resource. I know once the bestiary is released, a lot of information is going to be updated. Everything is linked down below in the description section for both podcasts and YouTube. And again, two weeks, the second book in the Crown Tournament series will be coming out. It's titled Crown Tournament 2. And Scott, did you have anything else you'd like to add today? Just excited to see some more, some more tourney bouts. Yeah, I think next section we get another chapter, another couple chapters of tournament. So super excited for that. And all right, stay tuned and we'll talk to you next time.